Hello, I'm Jacob from Intrepid Protoworks, and this video will be a direct continuation of our previous video where we went over calculating confidence intervals using Python. So we've copied and pasted in our functions for our mean, our sample standard deviation, and our sample standard error. Let's go ahead and pick up with our critical t uh, function. It'll take our alpha and our sample. It can also just simply take the degrees of freedom if we wanted, because all we're doing with the sample is using it to get the degrees of freedom. So where this is different is we're adding in an if statement, where if the degrees of freedom is greater than 120, then we'll just set the degrees of freedom equal to 120. Alternatively, you could also get a, um, a reference to the Z table at this point as well. That'd probably be a little bit more accurate, but for the sake of brevity, we're just going to do an if statement. The rest of the function is the same. So now we'll go down to the get CI. We'll just copy and paste in the parts that are the same. And then we're adding one more part, which will just be, we'll just call this error, which will be our critical T times our standard error. And then we'll also return our error in addition to our lower, upper, and error. Go ahead and fix a quick typo there. Now let's just go ahead and paste in some information real quick on our data set that we got from the IPUMS website. We're just looking at what the uh, different columns mean and what the code is for sex. So one is male, two is female. We're going to create empty lists, one for female data, one for male data for incomes. And then we are going to go ahead and just paste in our first bit of filtering. So we're not looking at the header. We're not looking at ambiguous or negative income. We're not looking at non-applicable and we're only looking at adults. So we're going to add in a couple if statements. One will look at if the income data is for a male. And if so, we'll append it to income data male. And then the second one will be if the income data is from a female. If so, we'll append it to income data female. So with all of that out of the way, that basically brings us up to where we can start talking about uh, graphing all this information. So we're going to go ahead and bring in matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, one new part of this. So we're going to go ahead and look at uh, styles. We're also going to go ahead and paste in the documentation there for anybody who wishes to reference this as well. Documentation will also be included in the relevant article. So go ahead and print out pld.style.available. This will show us what plot styles are available. For this situation, I personally like BMH. You might have reasons to use others, but I like it for making the confidence intervals visible. You can set the style by doing plt.style.use. We're going to go and comment to print statement so we don't see the uh, all the styles again. And then we'll go and import random and then get a couple of samples of our data set. Remember our data set is about 3 million in size, probably about half of that is male, half of that is female. We don't really want to be comparing, you know, million and a half data points to a million and a half data points. So now we'll go ahead and use our get confidence interval function for our male sample income and our female sample income. This is the same as last video. We're just doing it for two different samples. To do a bar graph, we also need to go ahead and grab the means for each of our samples real quick. So we're going to go ahead and get the mean for the male income sample and the mean for a female income sample. Now we're going to go ahead and do a couple quick print statements. This is the same as last time, but we're just going ahead and uh, doing it for both samples this time. With all the print statements prepared so we can see some descriptives, we can go ahead and move on to the actual graph itself. So we're going to do a simple bar graph. We're going to add in a couple of labels. We'll do male income and female income. Then we will go ahead and make a little list of our means, which will be our male income mean and female income mean. We'll do our confidence intervals, which will be male error, female error. And then we'll put a bar at our zeroth position and our first position. With all that information in place, we can do plt.bar, do our positions, our means. I'm going to go ahead and make this gray because if somebody were to say physically print the graph, you want colors that are friendly with that. Y error will be our confidence intervals. We'll go ahead and do 0.5 width. You can play around that to your preference. We'll align it to the center and we'll do the color of the error bars as black and then we'll make the cap size a little bit wider than normal so it's a little bit more visible. With all of that in place, we can then go ahead and define our X label. We'll just call the sample incomes. We'll do our Y label, mean income in dollars. We'll call our title just uh, mean income between male and female uh, samples. And we'll do our X ticks, which will be our positions and our labels. 
and then we'll just show our plot. Now we'll go ahead and save and run. And it looks like we mislabeled our data. So we'll go ahead and rename the list real quick and go ahead and hit run. So we can see our confidence intervals. Let's go ahead and run this again. You'll see that because of sample size, there'll be quite a bit of variance in here. Let's go ahead and decrease the sample size and see what it looks like. We'll go ahead and uh, run this again. And we'll just run this a few times so you can see what happens with different sample sizes in general. Go all the way down to five. You'll see that our confidence intervals are even going negative here. Go back up to 30. And you can start to see a little bit why 30 is often a popular number as things start to get a little bit more stable around there. Go ahead and make this bigger so we can take a look at it. You can also resize this and uh, play around with anything else here as well. Confidence intervals are a really central and important way of starting to explore your data. You'll see them all over the place. Uh, I would argue that you should even see them more than we often do. And there are some people that will even elevate the value of confidence intervals and tools like confidence intervals above p-values. All that to say that confidence intervals are a really valuable, really useful, and really common tool you see in the behavioral sciences and in most data sciences in general. Thank you for watching. In our next video, we will start going over the t-tests. If you have any questions, don't forget to comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe.